pieces of sock everywhere I go. Why is that, huh? It's because of you. You are the culprit. All right, <laughs> okay. So, hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to make a video. Doesn't this, isn't this how all of my videos start? I start and then she just crosses in front. Okay, um, I just wanted to make a video regarding double coats in Australian Shepherds and in a whole bunch of other dogs. A whole bunch of other dogs have a double coat as well, and I had a question regarding shaving your dog if your dog has a double coat, and I just kind of wanted to go over some of the things that relate to that situation because I think a lot of people don't really know why you shouldn't shave a double coat. So hopefully this video will help you with understanding a bit more about that situation. So, a lot of us have heard that shaving a double coat is not a good idea. But a lot of people don't even know what a double coat is. So let's get started with that first. I think it's important to know what a double coat is versus just a normal coat or a hypoallergenic, hy how do you say that? Hypoallergenic coat in dogs. I don't know. I, I'm hoping that you can see what I drew, but we're just gonna try it out here and then I'll look over the footage and see if it actually works. Let's get started with a non-shedding coat. So this would be your standard poodles or um, shih tzus, um, things like that that don't really shed all that much, things that are typically considered hypoallergenic. This is kind of what they look like. So hopefully this background gives you a little bit more, I don't know, definition, but hopefully you can see that. So this is a non-shedding coat, and you basically have hairs that are all along the skin, and you can compare that to a double coat. So in a double coat, you basically have guard hairs that are longer than your kind of feathery hairs that are in between the guard hairs. So all of these orange shorter hairs are kind of the downy coat. So now that you know what a double coat looks like versus just one of your kind of standard other coats, let's get more into why shaving a double coat is not necessarily the greatest idea. So a lot of people want to shave a double coat because they think that their dog is super hot during the summer and they think it's the best way to cool your dog off in a sense. And I'm just going to explain why that doesn't make sense and hopefully with some of the pictures you're going to be able to see why. Um, so let's get started and I will show you. So the standard thing that you're supposed to do with a double coated breed is to remove some of the undercoat, um, quite a bit of the undercoat, especially because they have changes based off of seasons in their coat. So when the coat goes into winter, it's gonna thicken up with a lot of undercoat. And then in the spring, it sheds a lot of that undercoat out, but it does need help. So this is what you're supposed to do with a um, double coated dog. You're basically supposed to get rid of a lot of that undercoat that's still in there so that the skin can breathe. Um, and that can be done, I do it with a Furminator, um, but there's a whole bunch of other things that are out there in the you know dog care world that will remove some of that undercoat for you. But you just have to put in the effort to remove the undercoat. So this is basically what a double coat looks like when a lot of the undercoat is removed. Now I'm gonna give you guys an example of what happens when you don't do that and when you shave. So when you shave a dog, you basically get this result. And basically what you can see is that it cuts the hair close to the skin, but it doesn't reduce any of the density of the fur that's beside the skin there is still gonna be a hard time for any type of wind to get near the skin at all. 
And as you have the dog growing the hair back, a lot of times undercoat grows faster than guard hairs. So you've got now undercoat that's growing faster than the guard hairs, which causes the dog to basically look a lot different than it did to begin with. All right, so what I'm trying to get across is that the whole goal of shaving your dog is to try and make your dog cooler. But in the end, it actually doesn't reduce the number of hairs that are on that dog's body. It's just going to cut those hairs shorter. And the issue is that when you do that, first of all, you don't increase the amount of air that can actually reach the skin. So I'm gonna try and show this to you guys a little bit more cohesively. So we've got the normal double coat right here and the coat that's been stripped of a lot of the undercoat. You can see that in this coat, you still have the guard hairs that are able to protect the, the dog from the sun rays, but you have a lot less undercoat. You're never gonna have no undercoat because that would be a little bit excessive. I'm sure that you would probably cause some um, skin lesions by trying to remove every single bit of undercoat, but the amount of undercoat is significantly reduced. It allows the air that is blowing sideways to reach the skin. That is the key point. This animal will be able to be a lot more cool than this animal. With this animal, the air is blowing, but the density of the coat is still extremely um, excessive. They're not going to be able to cool themselves down as much because the air isn't as able to reach the skin. And the second thing is that the sun rays that are beaming down have a better chance of actually burning the skin. And of course, also, you've got weird regrowth back. So a lot of times you might see a dog that's been shaved and then they look really poofy. And this is the reason, because the undercoat grows back quicker than the guard hairs and that looks really weird. So in order for you to better understand what a coat looks like when the hair grows back after being shaved, I'm gonna insert a couple of pictures right around here. Um, basically, not every single dog that's shaved is gonna look like that, but there is a high chance of the hair not growing back or that the undercoat grows back a lot quicker than the, um, the guard hairs. And that results in a dog that looks like kind of that puffy, really fuzzy haired kind of dog. And it just, it's, it's, it's not conducive to keeping your dog cool. It's going to continually um, require you to shave your dog every single time. It's not it's not a good option if you have the option of removing undercoat to begin with. So from the very beginning, anyone with a dog with a double coat should attempt to keep their dog's coat long and basically, basically just don't shave, don't shave it if you don't have to. Um, there are some exceptions to this rule, of course. And I would probably say that the only times that a dog should be shaved is number one, if it has been basically neglected for a long time and there are excessive mats in the dog. If there are so many mats that a groomer looks at that dog and says, there's no way <laughs> that we can get the undercoat out and that we can get those mats out, that dog needs to be shaved. It's better to have the shorter coat than to have mats that are pulling on the skin, causing skin sores. That's it's just not a nice thing for a dog to go through. So shaving should be done if there are excessive mats too close to the skin that can't be removed without shaving. The second thing would be that if you have an older dog, I can completely understand why it might be a good thing to shave your dog. Because with grooming and with the removal of undercoat. It takes a lot of energy out of your dog. It does require your dog to stand up a lot. And so for older dogs that have arthritis, it might not be the best thing. Um, basically, once your dog gets to a senior age, it's all about what makes them comfortable. 
It's all about what they can handle. So it might be a better option to shave in those older years, but it's always the best option to not shave if you can possibly do that. So the one note that I do want to add into this is that there are certain areas of your dog that you can shave. It's not that you can't shave every single area of your dog. I'm just talking about a full body shave. The areas that you can shave on your dog that aren't gonna really make a big difference. Number one would be the hair between the pads of the feet. That hair is not extremely dense. It is better to shave it and make sure that there aren't any mats that happen in there. And it's not gonna really affect the aesthetic look of the dog. It's actually gonna help the dog cool off a bit more if that area is shaved. The second area would be the private area. That area, first of all, does not have a high density of hair to begin with. Um, they are kind of naturally geared towards not having as much hair there just because of the, the hygienic reasons, right? I don't think there's any problem with a double-coated breed having their um, private area cleaned up a bit or the hair between the pads of their feet shaved. So those are the two main places where this doesn't apply to. So that's what I've got for you guys. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that the drawings kind of made a bit more sense of what's going on with the whole double coat shaving versus not shaving. I'm always, I learn better with visuals, so I hope that some of you guys are in the same boat as me and that it was kind of a, an easier way to understand why we should not shave a double coated breed. So if you guys have any further questions or any comments that you wanna to add to this kind of topic, you can always leave them in the comments down below. I always appreciate that. You can always give this video a thumbs up as well if you want. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.